Hey, what's up everyone? DJ Sturf here. I'm about to play Five Nights at Freddy's 1 Mobile again. This will be nights 3 and 4 this video. All right, let's go. Continue. All right. So now we're going to have Freddy heavily in play, or moderately in play, I suppose. Oh, they are on the move already. I'll let the phone call play again. This time I'll actually have to play. on the flip side all right a lot of these lines were taken and extended brought throughout the whole series man bite of 87 markiplier's famous clip was that the bite of 87 <laughs> and what it turned out to be i think it was the bite of 83 wasn't it oh my goodness for that Anyway, uh, most people that I've talked to said the first major YouTuber they saw play this game was Markiplier. And I know several of the major YouTubers played this game, and the first one I actually saw was Yami Mosh. So out of all the big YouTubers that I saw playing, I saw Yami Mosh, and I guess soon after I saw Big Bug and that completion, and then, oh look, it's FNAF's Five Nights at Freddy's 2 completion. And so that was pretty cool, inspiring, like, wow, what limits can be pushed in this game? So that also influenced my uh, play style decisions and all that, I guess. I don't know. Like, I, I try to take things to the next level anyway, but seeing the first few games in between Five Nights at Freddy's 2 and 3 already done, I'm like, hmm, wonder if I could do this and up the game a little bit. So, yeah, pretty cool. You know, all these green runs talking about conserving power. So green as in being kind to the environment, you know. I, I do believe we should be good stewards of our world, and yeah, that also influenced my car decision. I, man, it's it's becoming a time in real life where we need to conserve all sorts of stuff, so I've always enjoyed being frugal and trying to minimize unnecessary spending. I guess my mentality is if I try to save on the frivolous stuff now, and just, you know, don't, you don't have to buy everything you see, and uh, just don't get stuff you don't need, save on the stuff you do need, all that. Um, I'm actually just gonna kind of sit here. Let's do that. Um, but if I can be saving now on the frivolous, and later on being able to be generous, that would be really cool. And um, I guess over time with a job, you know, this is a this is a tough economy. It's more like a two-job economy. There was a lending tree study that CNBC was quoting a few weeks back from June 2022. So if you're viewing this in the future, we'll see how that resolves. I think the market will hopefully recover. I don't know what's going to happen worldwide with some certain events and all that, but time will tell. And uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm one to believe that the Lord is always on the throne and that. Uh, as long as things should last, they will last. But um, as long as we can prolong things and take care of our world and all that, that's really cool. But if we have to conserve, man, and it's like a two-job economy, um, it's you, you got to do what you got to do to save up. So some things that, uh, and I guess going back to the Lending Tree study, 61% of people said that they are living paycheck to paycheck. So it's been a tough economy. It's like, what do you put your money into? Do you put into your 401k, which has gone down? On average, tremendously, even though people have been funneling funds in, the outflow has been um, positive. So meaning people are taking money out of the market, and that's been going on for a very solid while here, net. So it's it's been 
pretty bad economically and it's just one time where I'm hoping that you all have a good um, good set of savings and if not then I hope that you can start to save up pretty well um, part of what I do is just not spend much all right let me let the phone call go Unlucky. All right. Yeah, I mean that <laughs> poor night guard, phone guy. Oh yeah, Freddy. Well, I'm on Cam 4B. Part of the strategy here is it stalls Freddy when you're on the camera where Freddy is. As long as you don't move the camera, if you move the camera, all bets are off. Oh my goodness. Like you got to be sure the right door is shut if you move the camera, but you don't need to move the camera. Foxy is stalled out, or halted, deterred by frequent camera flips. And because this is such a fast night compared to PC, that's why I'm going at such fast cycles here. And there's just, there's no one as a threat right now, and as I say that, I'm sure that everyone's going to approach the door very quickly. <laughs> but um, anyway... It's a tough time because stocks are going down. Your 401k, if you have one, has probably gone down quite a bit. If you invest in bonds, your funds are locked up for a while, but that is guaranteed low risk money as long as you can hold out on that money. Some people can't. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, that's just not an option. If you can get a second job, if you have the energy, if you can still enjoy life while doing that, then cool. There is a balance. You don't want to just, you don't want to save money and hate life you want to save money wisely so you can enjoy the things in life that are important to you later. So I think of, go to the ant thou sluggard, <laughs> as the King James would have said. Or maybe it says, oh sluggard, actually, there too, but it's in Proverbs 6. Talking about how the ants store up everything for harder times, for the winter. And so they store up all sorts of stuff, hardworking, and uh, ready to go for tough times. So if you can save up, and save money on the things that you normally spend. Um, yeah, that's that's a good thing for the future. It's just wise financial thinking, you know? Be wise. I would say be frugal. I mean, you might have some life goals, some family goals down the road. Um, save up for certain things. If you are saving up for a certain thing, like a car or, or a house or a down payment on a house. Uh, oh my goodness. And, Jeez, don't even get me started on mortgage rates and uh, and the problem that predatory credit is, really. I mean, my goodness. So many things are based on interest that really bring people under bondage where they have to pay and pay and pay and they'll never be able to pay it off in any sort of realistic scenario. Uh, it's just, it's a bad setup and I wish that we would max out the interest rate potential um, to something reasonable. Um, and, you know, one of the best things financially is if you can get out of debt, then that is great. Uh, if you can minimize debt, get rid of your highest interest rate first, um, that's a good thing. Just any progress toward, uh, toward good scenarios is a good thing in this, in this scenario, in this, uh, this economy. But anyway, um, it's important to plan. One of the best things for me has been in saving up any sort of money at all uh, to plan things out and just even planning out the day and planning out goals and then thinking, well, what do I need to do long term? What do I need to save up and all that? That's important as well uh, for just the mental clarity in organizing. What do I need for funds for this specific thing? So um, I will pause the gameplay there. So planning helps, saving helps. Some things that are found useful over the years, well, coupons. Slick deals may help a bit with that, though. With slick deals, you have to make sure that you aren't just buying everything that you see. Just because it's a deal doesn't mean you need it. 
However, if you do find a deal on something you definitely need, all the better. Cashback sites also have been a help. So stacking cashback, coupons, free shipping minimums, and even silly things like gift cards that I got at a discount can all add up to a lot of savings. Think about it from this perspective. If you save $20 per week, after five weeks, you've saved $100. And over a year's period, that's over $1,000 saved. If you've seen my Crock-Pot cooking video, and at this point I only have one, I'm hoping to have more. I have a few much more developed recipes that I'll make videos about. Uh, some of which have won cook-offs too, uh-oh. <laughs> but uh, with the Crock-Pot cooking video, uh, that's, that's one example of a way that I've saved a bunch through the years when I wasn't earning all that much. Instead of going out several times a week to pick up fast food, which takes time and gas, if you get the energy to get all the ingredients from the grocery store and dump stuff in a crock pot for the week, and you just let it slow cook to deliciousness, well, you've helped yourself tremendously. Uh, I've fallen into the trap sometimes still of not having enough food through the week, and after work I might be exhausted, and I'm like, oh man, well, I'll just get this burger from Wendy's or whatever, and uh, my stomach may pay for it later, especially if it's Taco Bell. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe that's just me, but <laughs> also maybe not. Uh, but anyway, having healthy food, made all at once at a reasonable cost can save money and digestive happiness over time if you work it right, all right? Uh, in college, I worked a few part-time jobs simultaneously as well as took classes. Uh, even though they weren't all that lucrative, not the classes, but the jobs, I also volunteered at a few places that were important to me where I could fit that in. But uh, overall, what I'm saying is that little things can add up. Some things can add up more significantly. On the other hand, I do some things that are maybe a little bit silly, uh, but they do save over time. For example, I tear Kleenex in half. <laughs> so I use I'll, I use a little bit, you know, I, I don't need the whole Kleenex for every blow of the nose. Uh, I also um, buy soap on massive sales and I often have a year's worth of soap on hand. So that's sometimes kind of cool, but uh, I don't run out of soap very easily. <laughs> I, I double check to make sure I'm not wasting detergent and I'm just filling up the cap to the designated line. Uh, some, sometimes people will just fill up the entire cap and that's not really what you're supposed to do. That's too much usually. Part of these are habits from times when I wasn't making much at all and learned to stretch a dollar quite far. Uh, in seminary, I saw a huge sale on the New Balance shoes that I wore as cross trainers for track in high school. We're talking about $15 or so per pair, I think. It was something like that. And uh, I bought something like 12 pairs. I don't remember exactly how many I bought on that deal, but I know I still have some pairs in the closet. <laughs> Uh, but I figured that it would be enough shoes to last me a lifetime if I duct taped them a lot. And uh, that's just, yeah, <laughs> I wasn't earning all that much. But thankfully now I do have a very nice job that has taken care of me pretty well. So I do have a bunch of shoes, not from that initial purchase. And I guess thankfully in that case, but finding deals, stacking coupons and saving money can add up to you having more money on hand for things in the future. So anyway, this is a financial nights at Freddy's, I guess, right? Uh, hello, hello, I'm here to save some money. Oh, oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to give financial advice here, not trying to shill anything, but I'm just trying to give you all some tips based on what has helped me in the past through some strained income. And this is what I would call a two job economy. If you look at some of the most recent job reports, full time jobs have been decreasing and people have been picking up more part time jobs to make ends meet. So you see the positive job numbers and all that. That's what's been going on the last few months as of this current moment. Uh, hopefully that will change in the future and full-time employment will be much more popular and that will hopefully suffice for incomes but uh, thinking about the lending tree poll from june 2022 if 61 of people are living paycheck to paycheck getting more than one job is often a way to bridge that gap of need i thought about taking on a second job this year uh, though i wonder if i would have the long-term energy for that these days i still feel great for my age but i also don't want to burn myself out either <sighs> yeah um but you got to make time to enjoy life, not just constrain, constrain yourself in a painful way. So everything's kind of in tension there and you have to have a good balance, you know. Uh, inflation has been crazy. Putting money into a low yield savings account is basically just degrading at, let's say, eight and a half percent. Though the actual inflation rate is likely much higher than the CPI numbers, especially depending on how much you travel and how much you go to the grocery store. The basic expenditures aren't always weighted the same way as people normally would spend. And that's often a number to uh, put a veneer of a smiley face on because midterms are near and things are exaggerated to make them seem a little bit more favorable than they actually are. That happens, I'd say, I'd say with both political parties around midterms anyway. But 
Uh, anyway, putting away money in a certificate of deposit is another method, or it's called the CD. It takes away from your available cash on hand in case times get tough, though. Uh, the interest rates on CDs have been pretty pathetic the last several years, though those might actually tick up a little bit with all these Fed interest rate hikes. Uh, I know some of the savings accounts as well, uh, they've had increased percentages APY. So yeah, that's something that may be something you have to check how many transactions are allowed per month and all that, that might actually kill that deal. But uh, having your money liquid, so there, you have funds available to spend, but you're actually earning a little bit of interest on it. That's uh, a favorable thing as well. Bonds are basically bailing out the Fed at this point, and the two-year yield is cartoonishly higher than the 10-year yield. So they basically are encouraging people to help short-term by lending money to their efforts, whether they're dunce moves or not. Uh, you print enough money, you find out what happens, I guess. Wages aren't increasing as quickly as inflation either, so keeping a job and getting a few percentage points of a raise is still effectively a loss in earned value. As I mentioned before too, the stock market has been tanking this year, and it's been doing that pretty dramatically and reliably. Uh, sometimes there are stock market rallies, all the while net inflow is down. My best bet in that case, larger fish are using smaller fish as exit liquidity until policy makes sense in setting up another bull run, maybe even years down the road at this point. So it's not looking too great at this current moment. But anyway, with all that being said, two constants here are that a job or livelihood brings in money and being wise and frugal with that money also keeps your money from trickling down as fast. From my side, YouTube doesn't bring in all that much money and not a lot of YouTubers make a livable wage on the platform. And I'm not complaining here. It does bring in some money, but I'm just saying even if people make a livable wage on YouTube, sometimes it's very flavor of the month-ish and you can be on top of the world one month and just get algorithm to next. And yeah, my tips here in this economic downturn is to set realistic expectations, work hard with what you have and save money as much as you can until storm clouds clear. I'd even say it's a recession, not just an economic downturn. We've had two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. The two year yield and the 10 year yield have gone way beyond simple inversion. And I'd expect job cuts to start ramping up in a few months from now. We'll see. Um, I'm hoping that things are better than I expect. And I'm, I tend to be optimistic with this. Uh, and over time, I still think history plays an important role in predicting what will happen in the future, even to high probability. So for example, I think the stock market will at some point return to where it was and even exceed where it has ever reached. However, I tend to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. And that's where I'm at right now. I still remember the NASDAQ in the 16,000 range, the 16 mids, I think, too. And now, what, today was like 10,400 something. It was like, wow, it's come down a long ways. <laughs> so my goodness. But anyway, regardless of whether you would call yourself frugal, I hope you're wise in how you earn, spend, and save. Life can get crazy, but hopefully things end up really well for all of us. And that's just kind of a another optimistic hope, you know? Anyway, uh, next video, I'll be back at Five Nights at Freddy's mobile, the OG Scott Cawthon version of the app, and I'll go for nights five and six. But hopefully you've enjoyed this a slight financial discussion and all that, and <laughs> I hope you can take some tips, and I hope they're really helpful. So anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. Peace, God bless you, and have a great day. Yeah.